and we are live hello homemakers and everyone in the chat or on the replay on today's episode of homemaking with purpose i'm going to tell you why you should romanticize your life but before i do that Let's talk about what it means to romanticize your life just to make sure we are all on the same page. So I'm going to throw the question out there. What do you think it means to romanticize your life? Tell me in the chat or on the comments section if you are on the replay. So once again, on today's episode, we're going to talk about why you should romanticize your life. But first, I want to get an idea from you what you think that means and whether or not you think that's a good thing because I know that everyone doesn't think it's a good thing to romanticize your life. So let's talk about that. So if we look at the definition of romanticize your life, it is a trend about celebrating yourself and making the most ordinary day feel extraordinary. So Leslie Young says to romanticize your life means to use perfume. And yes, that could certainly be. But again, when we look at the definition, it is a trend about celebrating yourself and making even the most ordinary day feel extraordinary. And this is according to How to Romanticize Your Life in 17 Easy Steps by, oh, excuse me, by um, on Wiki How to Do Everything. So on wikihowtodoeverything.com. According to Christina Karen at the New York Times, Romanticizing your life is a trend. It's a trend that took off early in the pandemic to encourage people to appreciate life's simple pleasures. And yes, I suppose it is a trend because it's not something that I was hearing about before the last couple of years. So what do you think romanticizing your life is. I've given you the definition from a couple of people. So what are your thoughts? So, hey, Deb. So Blossom with Grace says she sees it as prioritizing joy. And you know, Blossom, it is so interesting that you say that because it certainly has a lot to do with setting priorities and being more joyful. So let's just back up for a second. And I am going to go back to the two definitions and then we'll unpack those. Hang on just one second. All of a sudden my nose gets drippy. So according to how to do everything on Wiki, romanticizing your life is a trend about celebrating yourself and making even the most ordinary day feel extraordinary. And then the New York Times, Christina Caron says, romanticizing your life is a trend that took off early in the pandemic to encourage people to appreciate life's simple pleasures. Now let's unpack that for just a minute. A trend that encourages people to appreciate life's simple pleasures. Not necessarily the fancy, not necessarily something extravagant, or even the extra special, but enjoying life's simple pleasures. So when we back up over and we look at our comments and we see where Leslie says it could be perfume and Blossom says it's prioritizing joy, it is figuring out a way to look at life's simple pleasures. But it also includes self-love. So, (coughs) excuse me, 
certainly when you're prioritizing joy and using a little bit of perfume, you're also indulging in self-love. Because here's the thing. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So you need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself, ministering to your own needs, filling up your cup, so to speak. So it's kind of like when you're on the plane and the stewardess is giving those instructions and they say, put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put them on the child. That means take care of you so you can take care of them. Take care of yourself, minister to your needs so that you can take care of the family or the people in your life that you are meant to care for. So there's that. And, and here's the thing too, that I so often know because I've been there, as women, we often give and give and give and give and we wear ourselves down or we wear ourselves out. We're so focused on caring for others that sometimes we forget to care for ourselves. And then we can get depressed and fail to see the good in our lives. So it is important to indulge in some self-love. Now, that doesn't mean to be egocentric. It doesn't mean to take care of your needs at the exclusion of everyone else. It doesn't mean to neglect your family or anything like that. It just makes sure you've got a full tank so that you can go the distance with what you need to do for your family. Even if that family is just you and your boo or you've got children that you're responsible for, you need to have a full tank so that you can take care of those that you're responsible to in your life. So one of the other things that Sometimes we do as women, and I know I've been guilty of the same thing, is that sometimes we get to looking at what other people have and comparing ourselves to what others have or to what others are doing or comparing our children to other people's children or their baby is already walking and mine is still crawling and yada, yada, yada. But Romanticizing your life is and indulging in self-love is taking care of yourself and looking at the things that you have and the people in your life with appreciation and not falling into the trap of comparison. So when I was introduced to the idea of romanticizing your life, and I was introduced to this uh, topic by Nikki and inspired by Nikki, I wholeheartedly embraced it. And I am hoping to encourage all of you to come along with me on the journey. Now, before we get started, let me just say welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information for today's homemaker. I am Denise Jordan, your host, and today's show is brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory and you can see the featured apron right now is still our trick or treat. We've got about three or four of those left. And then, of course, we're still celebrating fall with our grace apron, which says thankful that it's back in stock. And then also we're celebrating fall with our bon appetit, which has Nice little signs, um, writings down the side that says enjoy, enjoy, and bon appetit because that just goes right along with Thanksgiving. So those are the goodies that we have in store for fall. 
And you can check us out at www.aprondiva.com. Okay, so viewers, as we move through, if you have a question, be sure and put hashtag Q in front of it so that I catch it. Mickey Blue Skies won't be on tonight. I'm here by myself, so I'll be trying to take care of everything. So now let's get into it. So now let's talk about the reasons to romanticize your life. And let me just have, before I get into mine, and let me just take it back off real quick. Tell me what are some of the reasons based upon the discussion we just had what are some reasons for romanticizing in your life? So, hey, Nefertiri, I am so glad you are here with me tonight because you were one of the main ones I was thinking of when I looked at this topic about romanticizing your life. And I had mentioned earlier that as women, as homemakers, as moms, we get so busy taking care of others that sometimes we forget to take care of self. So I am encouraging all of you to romanticize your life. And part of that includes self-love and self-care. So right now I'm asking the chat or if you're on the comment or brother, if you're on the replay in the comment section, tell me what are some of the ways that you can think of to romanticize your life. And notice I said romanticize your life, not my life, but your life. And then I'll share with you some of the things that I've been thinking of. So you guys go ahead and try to pop some of those in. <clears throat> and of course, I get on the show and all of a sudden I get hoarse. All right. I'm so used to checking my phone when I hear those little beeps. I think it's blue skies, but I don't think she's going to be on tonight. So... <clears throat> hey, Ronnie Weaver, it's good to have you here, as well as Deb Whitmore. It is good to have you here as well. So you guys, I'm waiting for you to put into the chat box or on the comment section some, some ways that you can think of to romanticize your life. And I am going to go ahead and start with some of the tips that I have for um why you should romanticize your life and then give you some tips that you can use. So I think a good reason to romanticize your life is because romanticizing your life encourages you to focus on you. It encourages you to slow down and take it easy and focus on yourself. And this is what Ronnie popped in was to taking the time to just sit and relax. And I will have to admit, I have not been doing enough of that. But as of this week, I'm trying to make some changes. I visited a friend the other day and she is quite ill. And I just, it made me think about some behaviors that I needed to change. So Deb Whitmore says she's a full-time caregiver for her spouse for over 16 years. So for her, it is just giving herself grace and gratitude generally. And I'm going to say, boom, because writing is one of those things that comes up in almost every list of ways that you see to romanticize your life. One of the first things it talks about, in addition to a new beverage, is to give yourself grace and to journal your gratitude or to write a letter. So there's that. So, okay. Uh, so Jenny asks, is this a clapback video to have us have a homemaker? A while ago, she posted the dangers of romanticizing your life and now you posted a video encouraging it. Oh, no, 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 Jenny. No, 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 no. Number one, I would never do a clapback. That is just not what I do. What I am talking about is what I believe. And I know that uh, Angel has a different belief in that. I happen to follow another YouTube creator whom Angel and I both follow and enjoy, 
who talks about romanticizing your life. And uh, her name is Nikki Marino of Inspired by Nikki. And Nikki talks about romanticizing your life every month and she gives different ideas. And I've been following those and I thought that I would share those with some of my viewers. Now, some of my viewers may also be viewers of angels. I don't know if they are or not. But it is certainly not intended to throw any shade on Angel, not by any means. She has her perspective. I have mine. And it's not a problem. We are actually good YouTube friends. So, no, this is not a clapback at all. I am encouraging you to romanticize your life because I am looking at the definition. And I'm going to back it up because you may have missed it. Uh, let's see here. So the definition of romanticizing your life is to celebrate yourself and make even the most ordinary day feel extraordinary. And it's a trend that took off during the pandemic so that you appreciate the simple pleasures of life. So I was speaking to um, Nefertiri just a little bit earlier, and she says, being that we live in a Disney princess world, she must admit she quite she's quite surprised by the idea of romanticizing one's life is a thing. And affirmations are her greatest tools for romanticizing her life. And boom, Nefertiri, that is another example that when I was doing the research for this video, several of the sites recommended doing daily affirmations. So daily affirmations are your greatest tool and they can be others because it makes you appreciate and have gratitude for those things that you have in your life. And when I said I was thinking about you earlier, I was thinking about you because I know you're a young mom, you've got a um, you've got several small children and <clears throat> Having had several small children of my own at one time, I remember how overwhelming it can sometimes be. And one of the things that I used to do to kind of fill me up, and I had a very stressful job because I worked at the VA um, as a nurse and it was very stressful. So one of the things that I would do to fill me up when I came home is I would go into the bathroom and I would lock the door. And I would take a long, hot bubble bath. It was like, Calgon, take me away. And I probably had some Calgon at the time. So that was one of the things that I did to just kind of help me de-stress and just relax. So that when I came out of that bathroom, I could minister to the needs of my family. So there's that. So that's why I thought about you, because I know that as moms and homemakers, sometimes we get so caught up in the taking care of other people that we don't often find times for ourselves. And we put ourselves last on the list if we even make it on the list. That's another thing to think about. So, so those are some things to think about there. So, okay. Let's see. Um, and then Deb mentioned giving herself grace and doing gratitude journaling. So, okay. So there's that. <clears throat> Got a frog in my throat tonight. We talked about the fact that romanticizing your life included self-love. And I talked about one of the things that I could do. And as I mentioned, it also gives you a reason to slow down and to take it easy. And... You know, it encourages you to just engage in life in a way that brings you peace and joy. And Blossom said it best up here when she said prioritizing joy. So those are some of the things that you can do to romanticize your life. And then Leslie says, yes, gratitude journaling is a biggie. And like I said, that is on every list that I've seen is gratitude journaling. So what are some other things that you can do? Well, 
one of the things that you can do is to engage in mindfulness. You can engage in mindfulness. And what do we mean by mindfulness? That means to think about your surroundings. Think about what you are doing and key into that. Don't just blindly move through the day, but to actually enjoy whatever it is you're doing and where. Um, for example, I like to sit out on the porch and enjoy the soft breezes. And when I'm sitting there, I will purposefully listen to the chirping of the birds. I will look to see if I see any little chipmunks. Right now we've got two white rabbits that are running all over the place. But I will listen to the wind chimes, but I will purposefully be present in that environment so that I am enjoying the simple pleasures of sitting on the porch. So there's that. I might listen to the wind chime. And when I hear the wind chime, sometimes it makes me think of my husband because when I, all the wind chimes we have, I purchased and I purchased them for him because he loves wind chimes. So when I hear the soft melody, I think, oh, you know, Will loves those wind chimes. And sometimes we'll sit on the porch together. And as the breeze just kind of gently blows them, we will enjoy that. Right now, he's out sitting on the porch listening to music. I'm up here chatting with you guys. And I was like, oh, he's sitting out on the porch without me. But again, something as simple as sitting on the porch or listening to the wind chime and enjoying yourself. And let's see. Nepha Terry says she's got six kids and she's far, far from young. Honey bun, you are not as old as I am. I'm in the grandmother stage. So definitely you're a young mom as far as I'm concerned. And yes, you have six littles. And again, you can be so caught up caring for all of them that sometimes you put off caring for yourself. So that's why I said I thought of you. Um. Deb says each day in her planner, her number one priority is to list something to do for herself. And it can be as simple as listening to an audio book for 15 minutes. And I have to tell you, Deb, that was one of the things that I had on my list for other ideas. I listen to audio books just about every day. Right now I'm listening to Two of them. One of them is James Patterson, one of his private novels about some kind of a murder thing going on in India. And the other one is by Debbie Maycomer. And it is Because of You. And it's, you know, a nice, lighthearted romance. But just sometimes just I'll put those on when I'm taking a bath or if I'm just sitting out on the porch or maybe I'm washing dishes or folding laundry. I'll put those on and it just kind of ministers to me, helps me to relax a bit. So yes, those are good. Ronnie's getting good ideas from um, from all of us. So, okay, that's good. Now, something else that I want to bring back to the young moms, uh, particularly if you've got little girls, many times one of the things they'll want to do is play tea party or play mommy or play house. And sometimes there's things you'd rather do than do that. But sitting down, <clears throat> sitting down and taking the time to play tea party with your children is a way of ministering to them. But it also helps you enjoy them right where they are. It helps you enjoy the sweetness that can only come from children at certain stages of their life. So definitely that's something that you can you can enjoy. So enjoy those moments with your little ones. Not extra special moments, just the everyday mundane. Fixing the peanut butter sandwiches and cutting off the crust and just different little things like that. But probably tea party is one of those that so many people have to do with their little ones, either play tea party or play house. Um, when you're folding your laundry, just enjoying the scent of the, the fragrance of the clean as the clothes come out 
or the warmth as they come out of the dryer. Those are just simple everyday things to make you be mindful of what's going on in your environment. So there's that. And then another way you can romanticize. Um, oh, Nefertiri says we thought of each other today. She's making a social calendar specifically for her social life. And on her calendar, she put on tonight's show. She says this show is, oh, Nefertiri, thank you so much. That is so kind and so sweet. I'm feeling a little chill right now as I read this. And I appreciate that you say that. And yes, me being mindful or being present here with all of you is one of the ways that I can romanticize my life is being mindful of being present when I'm with family and with friends. And backing up for a second, when I talked about that playing tea party or whatever it is that you're doing with your littles, it's just being mindful and being present with them. Okay, another way that you can romanticize your life is to jazz up your daily routine. Now, if you guys saw my last video, which was romanticize your life with uh, the biting tea maker, you'll see that I got a new teapot and I'm making tea. Now, I give my husband a cup of tea every morning. You guys already know that. I give him a cup of tea every morning in the fall and in the winter. And there's three different kinds that I normally will give him. But right now, for the month of September, I am romanticizing our life by exploring different kinds of tea. When my son and his family went to Dubai, he brought me back some loose leaf tea from Dubai. And one of them was a pomegranate and hibiscus tea. Well, that's what we had for breakfast this morning was the pomegranate and hibiscus. And a lot of times... He doesn't notice the difference in the flavor or the aroma of the teas because the other three are quite similar. But today he was like, what was this one? This one was different. But he noticed the fruity uh, taste and the floral fragrance of that. So we're exploring different teas with the teas that my son gave to me. And he gave them to me to help me relax and slow down. And um, Blue Skies had given me a, um, a new tea cup for me to drink my teas in. And I don't know, I just find something that's just so civilized and relaxing about drinking tea. It's not like, like when I'm drinking coffee, I can drink it relatively quickly and I'm not real paying much attention. I just drink it and doing whatever I'm doing. But when I'm drinking tea, I'm in a, just in a different frame of mind. I'm a little bit more relaxed, taking my time and enjoying whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, and then try a new scent. And then we already had, uh, I think it was Leslie right off the bat that said perfume. So you can certainly try a new scent. And one of the things that I did for the month of August was to try a new perfume, which was the Dossier perfume. I should put that link in the description box. I'll do it later. I didn't do it yet, but I will. But you can try a new perfume. And you can either try a new perfume for you or you can try a new perfume that you think that your partner will enjoy just to kind of feel more fresh and more feminine. So there's something you can do. But notice I have on here writing a letter because letter writing is one of those things that I do to relax, to slow it down and relax because you've got to sit down at the table. You've got to get out your stationery. I tend to have a cup of tea right there beside me when I'm doing it. So it was one of those things that I do. And it helps me to engage in a connection with other people. And on just about every list, either journaling or writing a letter to connect with others was on the list. So you guys are right in there with some of the things to do. Um, Okay, now let's back up for a second. So um, Nefertiri says, by the way, living in a Disney princess world, she means everywhere we've, we've ever turned, we were hit with a romanticized idea of life. 
kind of like the old school Calgon moment you just mentioned. And you know, you are right to a certain degree. When you look at the Disney princess type world, a lot of that stuff is just make believe. And so speaking to, I think it was Jenny Car Jenny's Corner who talked about Angel's comments. That I believe was a perspective that Angel was moving from, from the perspective that the Disney princess world gives us an unrealistic view of life. And because of that, it can cause some problems in the family and in the home and in our dissatisfaction with our own life and happiness. So I get that. Um, so if, if that's the perspective that you're coming from, I see it. However, the perspective that I'm looking at and that what so many people use is just that making your everyday life better, whatever that is, just making that life better. And you can be quite poor, be in poverty, but you can find things in your life that you can show gratitude for. Um, so that is, that's what I'm talking about. And then when you talk about the cow guy and take me away, that was a woman in the bathtub just trying to relax and let that woman, that, that negative energy just kind of drain out. So, yeah. Now, I don't know if I could even find cow guy in bath, um, salts anymore, but that was one of the things that I did used to engage in. Let's see. Oh, so now Ronnie said she likes my clear teapot, the one I used on one of my TikTok videos. Blue Skies gave me that teapot. It is so cute. It is so dainty. And I can actually set it on the stove or set it on a burner. Well, I set it on my glass cooktop. I don't have a gas stove, so I don't know what it would do on one of those. But you can set it on a healing element. And it is just so dainty and so pretty. And I've got, I have some of those tea balls that when you put the tea ball in the water, it opens up like a flower. It is so pretty and it looks so nice. And then I pour the tea from that little pot into my mug that Blue Skies uh, made for me. So, yeah, I have that. But, and then I got the new electric tea kettle from by Dean, and it is so nice too. So I'm I'm using them both. Like the bigger tea kettle, I can make five cups of tea in it. So I'll use that in the morning when I'm going to make tea for the hubby and myself because I'll give him a big twenty ounce mug with uh, you know one of those uh, like Yeti mugs, and then he drinks it out of that. And then I may have two cups. But when I use that small, clear glass teapot, I've got my little china teacup out and I'm just sitting there being civilized. And it's just for me while I'm writing the letter. So, yeah, I get I got you. I've also got some china teapots as well that I picked up like uh, at different places. So, yeah. So. Um, Nefertiri, I'm going to ask you to jump in on a question in just a second. But she says uh, she started waking up extra early for quiet time and the possibility of working out in a long shower without anyone wanting to come in. Nefertiri, I hear you. That is why when I said when you go into the bathroom, lock the door. I remember when I was a, a, a little girl and whenever my mom took a bath, me and my other sisters, we would go in and sit there and talk to her. Now, in retrospect, I'm thinking our poor mother, that was probably the only peace and quiet she had, at least she tried to have. And then here there's three of us sitting in there talking while she's trying to take a bath. So when I was a mom and had young ones and my job was very stressful, I needed to have peace and quiet. And I wanted, I wanted private time in the bathroom because that was the only place when I was growing up you could get private time. If you were lucky, it was in the bathroom and there were five girls and one boy. So Greg always had private time in the bathroom, but the rest of us, anybody might walk in at any minute. So I always locked the bathroom door when I went in. I thought, I don't want anybody coming in. I don't want anybody knocking on the door. I just want a few minutes of peace and quiet. And that was the only place I was able to get it. And even now when I go in the bathroom and it's just me and the hubby here, I will shut the door because I just need that quiet time there. So I understand you getting up extra early for that. And right now I'm working on a course 
uh, about letter writing. And so I'm getting up at 6 a.m. to work on it. Now, it's just me and the hubby here, as you guys know. But if I get up at 7 or 7.30, he gets up at 7 or 7.30. And when he's up, the TV's on, the music's on, this is going, that's going. It's just noisy. Now, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy the sounds of having someone live with me. That's not what I'm saying at all. I enjoy the sounds of him. But there are times when I crave just a little bit of quiet so that I can work on something that I need to focus on. So I've been getting up at 6 a.m. And then he might not get up until 7 or 7.15, which gives me an hour to an hour and a half to work on something before Sports Center and Skip and Shannon and all those guys get started. Okay, so now, um, Nefertiri, if you can respond to this, I would appreciate it. But she says, how do we give times to ourselves when our littles are always with us? Sophia, probably it's going to have to be nap time. So there's only one or two things you can consider doing. So when the little ones go down for their nap, that's going to be your time to relax. So either you're going to take a nap when they're down so that you can relax a little bit. That could be your time to take a bath, to sit and read. If your mom or some other family member is close, maybe once a week they can come over and maybe spend an hour with the little so that you can get out and have some time to yourself. But it's difficult when you have little ones. And I know because when we first had our twins, we didn't live at home where our family was. We lived away in another city and it was just the two of us. And so it was difficult to get some quiet time. And you might have to take Nefertiri's um, suggestion where she gets up early before her littles gets up so that she can have a little time to herself to get some things done. So Nefertiri, if you could respond to that for Sophia, and then um, Deb says her husband's grandmother would call her every day and a couple of times a week. And she would say it's tea time and she would walk up to her house and they would have green tea and molasses cookies. Oh, I love that. I just love that. That is just so nice. Tea time. And you could just walk up there and just sit and just have a little bit of peace and quiet with molasses cookies. I will bet to this day molasses cookies hold a special place in your heart i'll just bet they do but that is just so sweet uh nefertiri is laughing at me locking the door oh yeah lock the door so the day would melt away for those moments we shared she knew just what she needed it and when and you know deb you said you've been caring for your hubby for 16 years so yeah there's going to be times when you just need a minute to get away i understand yeah. So Penny says she usually watches the replay, but she's finally caught alive. She likes to hold a book that she reads and drink tea. <laughs> Boom, Penny, I get it. I do too. And I'll tell you what, I um, have got two books on CD and on tape that I'm listening to, but I've also got a bunch of um, hard copy books too that I read from time to time. And sometimes if I'm listening to a book on CD on my um, little boom box, I don't have earbuds for it. And so when I and I get into bed to relax and I either read or listen to something and my husband's like, get your earbuds, get your earbuds, get your earbuds, get your earbuds. So if I'm using if I'm if if it's on CD, I don't have earbuds. So then I have to put that away and I'll get out a book and I'll just sit there and read that kind of thing. So so there's that. But I get it. Because there's something about holding that book in your hand that's just so relaxing. And it doesn't take the place of a Kindle. No, 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 no. A Kindle or a book on CD does not take the place of having an actual hard copy book in your hand. So, Penny, I get it. So, Kenya says her husband loves Skip and Shannon. Oh, well, Kenya, I like Skip and Shannon, too. I love Shannon Sharp. I love his voice. I just love the cadence of it. I think he's so handsome. I just love Shannon Sharp. But I listen, like I said, I listen to him every day under duress. It's not like I plan to listen to him, but what's on is what's on. So if I'm in the kitchen working, I'm listening to Skip, Shannon and Skip or whoever else it is. Um. 
A book and tea is definitely refreshing for the soul. So Kenya says incorporating a quiet hour as well as a nap. So, so that's something um, I think it was, Sophia, you might consider doing is incorporating a quiet hour as well as a nap. I like that idea. So especially for those of you who have children that are maybe too old for a nap, but they're still old enough or young enough, you could maybe send them to their room and say, okay, so now it's quiet time. So you need to go to your room. You can read a book. You can play with a puzzle. You can do something quiet in your room. And mommy's going to have some quiet time out here. Sophia, if yours are too little for that, then when they take their nap time, you can take yours or getting up earlier um, before them. So there's that. Okay. Oh, just came to it. So Sophia says they've outgrown the need for naps, but she can try to implement quiet time for them as well as wake up 15 to 30 minutes before them. You know, Sophia, I would say suggest waking up an hour before them, because if you get up an hour before them, then you can take your shower, um, get some things done in the house before they get up and then be able to kind of be prepared and ready when they come down. But certainly if they're too old for naps, they can certainly have quiet time and you can give them probably about 30 minutes of quiet time. I doubt if an hour would work depending upon the age, but you can try it. Now, you have to keep an eye on them to make sure they're in there doing what they're supposed to be because you know how kids can be. But you know what I mean. Um, and then Nefertiri says it depends on what you want quiet time to look like. Friday evening, she does dinner and a movie. She makes a big deal for the kid, for the children halfway through the movie opening. They are getting sleepy. Ha. Huh. Oh, wait, I missed it. And then she's free for two hours, even if she only sleeps right there in the family room with them. OK, that makes sense. And then Deb says when their kids were little, she would tell them mama needs a time out and we would set the timer and we would practice being quiet. Oh, I like that. Sophia, there you go. Mama needs a time out. Most kids know what a time out is today. So mama needs a time out so the kids can go to their room and they can be quiet in there while mama is quiet in her room or in the kitchen or wherever, just enjoying some tea or whatever. Okay, let me make sure I, I'm staying on track here. Um, so we talked about trying a new scent, writing a letter, bath or showers, and then some other ideas that you guys were sharing. So we got some of those. And just as a reminder for those of you that have joined us late, we're talking about uh, what it means to romanticize your life and what it means is to engage in self-care and to be mindful of what's going on around you and uh, that kind of thing. It is not pretending to be Cinderella. So there's that. And we already talked about other ways that you could um romanticize your life, such as trying a new scent. But here's something that I did. I got, let me get this off. So I bought a candle. I went to Target and I got this new scent called Cashmere Vanilla. It is to soothe and comfort. And it smells really good. And, you know, I, I've tried to light candles. I'm not a big candle person. Whenever my daughter-in-law comes, she always lights candles when she's home. But when I light a candle, if I walk out of the room, my husband puts it out. So, but I wanted to have a whole collection. So I got this stuff. So I bought these milky bath bombs. And they're the Soothe and Comfort, the Cashmere Vanilla. And you drop the ball into the bathtub and it creates a, a fizz this is what they look like they look like big old tennis balls and you drop them in the bathtub and it creates a fizz but they smell so good and then this is the same scent this candle is the same scent i also got some oil this it's like a bath oil or you can put the oil on your body same scent 
And then I got the um, body wash and the lotion. So I got this whole collection and it's French, being French. Oh, look at there, being French. That's cute, being French. Or being Frenchy, however you want to say it. So I got those a couple of weeks ago. And so I've been using that. And then I told you my son and daughter-in-law had sent me some things to help me relax. Well, they sent me these shower steamers. And they come in a set like this. And you just... You can either break it in half and then you drop it in the bottom of the tub or your shower stall and then the water runs down on it and it creates a nice little steamy fragrance in your bath and this one that i used first off was lavender and so they're to kind of help you relieve stress so it's like six aromatherapy shower bombs so and i had not seen a shower bomb before so these are shower bombs that they have got for me so those those things and then of course the different teas and I didn't bring any of those upstairs but I just kind of wanted to show you those but yeah that's a bomb that's pretty big nepotary I know I was like wow yeah that is a bomb um and I had on my list reading the books so we already got those we already mentioned those and Let's see. Oh, and then I was showing you the bath things because one of the uh, suggestions that I had was for you to kind of turn your daily bath into a luxurious self-care ritual. And you can do different things with it yourself. And you know, darken the room, light the candle, just kind of, you know, just kind of relax and that should be good. So now it's your turn to tell me some more. You've got some other ideas. Now I've got little, like little crumbs here on my pull out the little pull out drawer or table where my mouse sits that dropped from that shower bomb okay all right so are there some other ways that you guys can think of to romanticize your life tell me some of those and remember what we're doing is to um, romanticize our lives in a way that feels practical and makes sense for you and your family. It is not pretending to be a Disney princess, but it is enjoying the quiet that comes when the baby takes their nap and you're engaging in a cup of tea. It is enjoying taking a walk with you and the kids pushing the baby in the stroller and just enjoying the outdoors and the atmosphere. It is relaxing and reading a book. So it is taking care of you so that you have what you need to take care of others. And it is doing some little extra things to make the everyday special. And that's what Nikki on at, um, Inspired by Nikki always talks about. She talks about making the everyday beautiful and one of the things she mentioned was getting out your fall clothes. And so that's one of the things I'm going to work on this week for my zone work is um, switching out my fall clothes from my summer stuff. Okay. So now let me ask you guys a question and I'll come back to this in a second. I can feel those little crumbs all over my little keyboard tray now. So let me ask you guys this, because you know I've been talking a lot about letter writing and you guys have heard me say from time to time that I'm working on a course that talks about how to write letters. So if you could receive a weekly correspondence from family or friends and pull it out and savor it as often as you like, how would that correspondence make you feel? Can you tell me that in the chat if you're on the live and in the comment section if you're on the replay? If you could receive a weekly correspondence from family or friends and pull it out and savor it as often as you like, how would that correspondence make you feel? And what form would that correspondence take?
Interesting. Now, Sherkendra Birch says using your PTO for us working moms. So that's PTO is paid time off or your sick day or vacation day or something like that. She says sometimes she'll take a day off work while her son is at school and do some things that she loves. And yes, yeah, sometimes you might need to do that. Take a vacation day or a PTO day. And sometimes it may be a sick day because your mental health may require that so that you can enjoy yourself. All right, so now let me ask you guys to please answer this question for me if you guys could. If you could receive a weekly correspondence from family or friends and pull it out and savor it as often as you'd like, how would that correspondence make you feel? And then what form would that correspondence take? There's that. And then I have another question, which is, would you enjoy sending and receiving a chatty letter from your children or grandchildren and be able to go back and read those historical letters from time to time? Tell me in the chat or in the comment section. And I tell you, that's what I've been doing. I, since I enjoy letter writing, I just started writing letters to people that I want to hear back from. And so it's kind of been encouraging them to write back to me. So I wrote a couple letters to my granddaughters and then they were like, wow. And so the one wrote back in a few weeks, the other one wrote to my husband first because she said granddaddy doesn't often get mail. So she wrote to him first. And then a few weeks later, she wrote to me. But it was so nice getting the letters from them. And I just felt so wonderful learning about their lives and what was going on and that kind of thing. And then both of them had decorated their letters so nicely. And I'd written a couple letters to my son, their father, and um, he wrote back as well. And uh, he wrote back twice. And he said that it kind of the first time I wrote to him, he was like, OK, now I'm going to write back. He said it took him a while to actually sit down and write it. He didn't want to like type it out. He wanted to actually sit down and handwrite it. So it took him a while to get to it. But he did. So what are you guys thoughts about that? So Ronnie says. She would probably cry, especially if the letter was from a loved one. And yes, so in your opinion, reading an actual handwritten letter would bring you joy. I have to tell you, it brings me so much joy to get a handwritten letter from someone that I care about. It is just nice. But here's the other thing. A letter is a piece of history. Like somebody sends you a text is here today. You might leave it in your phone for a while, but after a while, those texts disappear. And it doesn't record a history that writing a letter does. So Nefertari says she's conflicted by the question. She's so out of touch. So my other question then for those of you who feel like you would enjoy getting the letter which means you would also need to write a letter. Do you feel that you're able to write engaging, chatty, interesting letters to family and friends, but also leave a little piece of history so that they know what was going on in your lives 50 years from now? And if so, if you do, tell me about that. And if you don't, would you be interested in, say, taking a course where you could learn how to, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so I get up here and get to talk and it's dry in this room and so here I am coughing. Sorry about that. So would you be interested in taking a course? Now, I'm not asking you to take my course. I'm asking you your thoughts on taking a course. This is part of the research that I'm supposed to do about this course is to kind of reach out to some of the people that might be in my demographics and get some of their thoughts on letter writing. So... What are your thoughts in regards to that? Inquiring minds want to know. 
Now, I love getting the letters, and I always felt like I could write pretty decent letters. And I remember when I was younger and I was away in school, my mom said she always enjoyed my letters and I could write nice, chatty little letters. Um, but I just wonder, does it, how does everyone feel in regards to that? So Blossom with Grace says she would save all her letters as well. Yeah, I have a box that I have the letters in and then I can pull the letters out from time to time and read them and it tells me what was going on at that particular time, a day and time. And whereas I do do FaceTime and I enjoy that and the communication that can happen with that, once you close the iPad up, it's done, it's over. But that letter, I can pull it out and I can go over it again and again. And if you think about like way, way back in covered wagon days when those families moved away, they didn't see each other again for years, if ever. And so they wrote to one another to stay in touch. And when I read my historical romance novels, those women wrote letters every day. Now, again, it was a certain class because the folks that were poor and working hard every day, they didn't. But um, the so-called upper class women, they wrote letters every day to family members in different places. So, so there's that. So Ronnie says she feels the same way about photos. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I, I get what you're saying. So, okay. All right. Well, let me go to the next slide and ask you guys. So here's the 15-minute task for the week. And I'm trying to remember. Um, okay. So Deb Whitmore says... She loves getting a note from someone to let her know what that they're thinking of her. So, yes. So when someone sends you a note, that just lets you know what's going on with them, that they're thinking of you and um, that kind of thing. So I really enjoy writing letters and I'm hoping that other people do it, too. So now, Deb, you enjoy receiving those and Ronnie, you might enjoy receiving those. What are your thoughts about writing them? So just curious about that. So Kim says her mom and she used to write letters when she was in college. And she also used to write her siblings during their military service. So, yes, yeah, she feels she could write a letter if she wanted to do so. Great. And, you know, you probably enjoy looking at those letters that you see from them because it let you know how they were doing. You were able to stay in contact with them. So there's that. All right. So 15 minute task. One of the things I'm trying to do each week is share with you guys. What is the 15 minute task for the week? <clears throat> and I don't have a video this week that addresses the 15 minute task. So I thought I better share it with you here. So this is week four: master bedroom, master bath, and master um, bedroom closet. So Monday, the task was going to be polish the bedroom furniture. And I do have a video coming out where I did do that. I did get that part done. Tuesday is free day, so there's no zone work. And remember, this is the 15-minute task are your, is your zone work. So Monday, polish the bedroom furniture. Tuesday, free day. Wednesday, declutter and organize my yoga clothes because I got a bunch of new ones. So I need to kind of go through and get declutter some of the old stuff. Thursday, declutter and organize the hubby's underwear drawer. Can have keep his underwear and shirts and undershirts and things in a drawer, and he tears through them. And lately, he's been putting some things away for me. So when I get the laundry out, he's folded up his shirts and underwear and things, and he's put them away. So it's like, okay, I wonder what they look like in there. But it's time for me to kind of go through and kind of get things organized for him a bit. And then on Friday, I want to pull my summer clothes out of the closet and pack them away and start getting out my fall things, my fall dresses and, and, and shirts and those kinds of things. Saturday is family day and then Sunday is church or sp renew your spirit or again, church and family. Keeping in mind that if I have a lot to do during the week, like I've been really busy during the week working on a couple other things, 
if I don't get to my zone work during the week, let's say I'm working full time on YouTube or on Apron Diva, then I can take Saturday an hour on Saturday morning to do my zone work. So for you working moms out there, and I think it was, um, oh, Kendra, that was that Shakendra, who's one of the working moms. You would not be doing your zone work during the week. You would do these four items that I picked, bedroom furniture, decluttering, summer clothes, and those things. I would do. You would do those on Saturday because during the week you're busy working it and that kind of thing. So there's that. All right. So Ronnie's going to share a funny story with us. Let me get this off. Okay. Oh. Ronnie says she shared a, a, that uh, when she wrote her grandmother a letter and her grandmother replied back, but she also included her letter with corrections that she was a young girl. Oh my. Did you write to her again after that or did it take you a while before you wrote to her? Because I'm sure that probably impacted you in some way. So yeah, I'm sure it, it was a little disheartening for her to do that. Because you were probably so excited just to write to her. I know when I was looking at one of the letters that my granddaughters had written me. And, you know, she's 10. So I could see that some of the things she had spelled phonetically. And, you know, the large, big handwriting that little children use when they write letters and things like that. But all of that is going to change in two years, in four years. So imagine the next letter that I get from her, what it's going to look like what the handwriting is going to look like. And it's just like little children's voices. They are just so sweet when they're little. And then as they get older, their voices begin to deepen and to change. And those little baby voices go away. I've got a couple of voicemails that I've saved for years on my phone from when Morgan McKenzie uh, and Jordan and CJ left me a voicemail or a note. And I just saved them because I want to remember those little voices. But, you know, it changes. So, yeah. And then Shakendra says she's ready to pull out her fall wardrobe this weekend as well. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm tired of the summer stuff. I'm just kind of ready for something new. So, okay. So now let me talk about the apron note. So the apron note for this week, let me get this off the screen, is you have permission to take care of yourself. You have permission to take care of yourself. In case you missed it, you have permission to take care of yourself. And part of romanticizing your life is to take care of yourself so that when your cup is full, you've got something to give to others. So there's that. So as far as happy mail, I got a letter from Debbie Johnson and it was such a nice letter. She wrote me a letter to thank me. Well, first of all, she received her apron and she was so pleased with it. So she was writing to tell me about that. But then there were a few other things that she talked about. And it was so nice. Oh, and look at the lipstick on the back. Isn't it cute? She has the cutest stationery. So I appreciated that. And then um, the other thing that I wanted you guys to um, do me a favor, if you can, like one of the updates or happy pieces of happy updates that I have is that I got my apron shop connected to my YouTube channel. So if you're looking at my homepage and at the top where it says community tab and videos, it also says store and you can click on that store tab and it takes you to my apron diva shop. So if you can do that while you're on, click on that and let me know if you can see it because everyone can't seem to see it. I know Blue Sky said she can see it on one of her phones, but not on her tablet. And I'm not sure what that's about. I thought I had everything set up right. So if you guys can look, let me know. Ronnie said it did bother her, especially since she had a poem that she wrote about her family's farm. And it was published in the school magazine. Oh, I'm sure it did, Ronnie. I am so sorry that that happened. I, I just am. And even though... 
And, and I'm not saying I'm sorry because I'm responsible. I'm saying I'm sorry because I empathize with your pain. I get it. I've had those situations in my life too, so I get it. So Nefertiri is ready to get her fall clothes out too. She's ready to get those, just to kind of get things changed over. I'm looking forward to getting my porch started. Just kind of getting some of that summer stuff put away and coming out with fall decor. I'm ready to do that too. So anyway, so Kim says she can see the store page. Okay, well, thank you. I don't know why everybody can't see it. Some people can see it and some people can't. So I'm glad you can. So thank you. I can at least validate that. Um, so the question of the day, ladies and gents, if we have any on, what is your aha moment? What are you going to do to romanticize your life for the month of September? What are you going to do to romanticize your life for the month of September? September. Are you going to be more mindful? Are you going to be more gracious, giving grace to yourself and others? Are you going to think more about what you have to be grateful for and maybe engaging in maybe journaling your gratitude, something like that? Or are you going to try some new things? Like I'm trying the new teas with my husband and I'm, you know, serving him with that. So that's kind of fun. So that's what I'm doing. What are you going to do to romanticize your life? And notice I said your life because it's got to make sense for you. So for um, Nafia or rather Sophia, it could be that you get up an hour early while the littles are asleep. So you can have an hour of peace and quiet. It could be that mommy gets a time out and everybody goes in their room and has 45 minutes of quiet time and mommy has 45 minutes of quiet. Maybe you choose to take a bath through that time and relax. Anyway, what is it? What is it that you're going to do to romanticize your life? So um, Ronnie says she's going to buy a clear teapot and enjoy a cup of tea more often. I'll have to find out where Blue Skies got that. And I'll link it in the description box because I tell you, what, though, that little teapot is so nice. It really is. So leave me a comment on the replay. And if you're here on the chat, you can pop it in there. And Kim's going to end a side hustle so she can start her writing course. Okay, Kim, I'm with you. I'm right there. So, yeah, I'm working on my letter writing course. So, yeah. Okay, I think we have covered everything that I wanted to talk about. So, do come back and take a look at my last video, How to Romanticize Your Life with the New Teapot that I got. And I do have the link for the teapot in the description box. And that's it. So, Shakendra says she lives in Florida, but she still likes to bring in fall and fresh colors. And you know, Shakendra, that's a good point because regardless of where you live, fall is fall. Now, when I say fall is fall, it's fall for your area. Here in the Midwest, in Indiana, the weather's get cooler and the weather's getting cooler now. The leaves start to change from green to orange to yellow to gold to brown, and then they drop and all those kind of things. We have different flowers come up. But you will notice some changes in Florida, too. I don't know what those changes are, but you do. And I do know it does get a little bit cooler, does it not, in uh, those areas? Not like we get here, but there is like a change that you can notice in the seasons. And if nothing else, you can decorate it. Oh, well, yeah. So Deb, decorating for fall and fall colors. And Kim, yeah, the writing course should be interesting. So Shakendra is going to romanticize her life by oh, discovering a new recipe and cook it for family dinner. Now, see, that's what I forgot to mention. But it was, it was one of the things that I had written down, but I forgot to mention it. 
But that was on several of the lists, which was to cook something new, try a new dish and serve it to your family. So see, you, you are making it practical for your life and for your family. And I like it. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. Aha, Kenya is going to the library and pick up a book. And she might read it on her Kindle app. That's okay. I read it on my Kindle app. But every now and then, and I don't think I have my Kindle in here right now, do I? know? But every now and then, I feel the need to like hold a book in my hand. So yes, I get it. And then take a morning walk with you and your newborn or maybe you and your clarinet. Hey, either one is fine. I get it. I like it. Oh, so Ronnie's, uh, so Kim's writing a course for children's books. Kim, tell me what course are, are you in a program? Like, you, are you in the Digital Course Academy to work on your children's book or are you developing it on your own? Are you with someone else? I'm just curious. I'm just curious because Digital Course Academy kicked off this week. We're all in module one and uh, many of us are writing courses on different things. So I'm just curious. I've written several children's books, so I was just curious as to what, where you're um, taking your course through. So let me know. And did you guys have any other questions before we wrap things up? Or any other ideas you wanted to share? As Kim tells us where she's writing her course. Like, are you in DCA or are you taking it through a university or are you putting things together on your own, like with Thinkipit or Teachable or those kind of things? Let us know. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion we had on how to romanticize your life. Deb, I'm glad you joined me tonight. And this was a fun topic tonight, too. It was, I won't say it was an easy topic, but it was a fun topic. It was, and I think it was a needed topic because I think we all need to look at how we can take better care of ourselves. So thank you. I appreciate you joining me tonight. And um, those of you who said that you enjoy this time with me, I appreciate that, too. All right, ladies. And if there's any gents, I will see you guys next time. Yes, Shakindra every Wednesday at 7.45 Eastern Standard Time. I wasn't on last week because I just didn't feel well. I just wasn't up to it. So I wasn't able to do the show. But every Wednesday at 7.45. So um, Kim says it's a digital course. She will put the name of the academy in the chat. She didn't remember offhand. Okay. This is, I'm with Amy Porterfield's, um, uh, Amy Porterfield's Digital Course Academy that just started. And look who just jumped in. Nicole, how you doing? It is so good to see you. Hello, how are you? It's nice to, to have you join us. We are just wrapping up. We were talking about the need to romanticize your life. Why do it and what it means. And from the perspective that I approached it, it is to... Focus on self-care, uh, to be more mindful of your life and to do those things that you need to do to fill up your tank so that you are able to give to others. So that's where we are. And we are just ready to wrap that up. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.